Welcome to Electron Line. So, why is it that in deep space the temperature is minus 270 degrees Celsius? And how do we even measure that? Well, let's go back to the basics. Let's say we have a boiling pot of water. We can stick a thermometer in there and read it that it's indeed at 100 degrees Celsius. And then if we take the same thermometer and we stick it in a cup that has a mixture of melting ice and water, we'll find that the temperature of that will be zero degrees Celsius. But how do you stick a thermometer in space? I guess you could, but then what are you measuring? Here you're touching boiling water, here you're touching melting or a uh, water ice mixture. If you put a thermometer in the air, then you're measuring the temperature of the air, but space has no air. Space has no boiling water or freezing water. Space is space. How do you know the temperature in deep space? Well, we do know that if we get close to the sun or any star, it will feel hot because we get the radiation from the sun. But if we go really far away, where the sun is just a tiny little dot in the sky, just like another star, we're so far away from the sun and any other star that we simply do not feel the heat radiation from those stars, virtually zero, then what will be the temperature? Well, it turns out that if you place an object in space, it will radiate out energy, and by radiating out energy, it will cool down, it will get cooler and cooler and cooler. At the same time, if it's receiving energy from somewhere, like if you're close to the sun, then you'll warm up, it'll get warmer and warmer and warmer. And so an object in space will increase in temperature or decrease in temperature depending upon whether or not it's giving off more radiation than it's receiving or it's receiving more radiation than it's giving off. At some point, if the amount of radiation that's given off is equal to the amount of radiation that's being received, it will then be at a stable temperature. Well, if you're far away in space, that stable temperature will be 2.77 degrees above absolute zero or 2.7 Kelvin, which is minus 270 degrees Celsius or minus 455 degrees Fahrenheit. Really cold. So what is that incoming energy when you're in deep space? Well, it turns out our universe is filled with the leftover energy from the initial stages of the universe. It's called the CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background. And that radiation appears to be coming from an object that is at 2.7 Kelvin. Now, that doesn't mean it came from an object at 2.7. It is of the frequency of wavelength as if it is coming from an object at 2.7. So when, it, when you receive that CMB radiation, it will do a little bit of good, a little bit of heating up. And at the same time, the object will be radiating out. And when that incoming radiation is equal to the outgoing radiation, the object will be at a temperature of 2.7 Kelvin, the same temperature of that imaginary object that the CMB is coming from. And that is therefore the temperature of deep space. It is simply the temperature that an object will become if you place it in deep space so that the outgoing energy is equal to the incoming energy and that will then be the final temperature. Which, by the way, is then the temperature, as they say, of the CMB, the cosmic microwave background. And so yes, it's pretty cold. Uh, traveling through deep space, you have to deal with the fact that you are going to be at a temperature near absolute zero. The object you're traveling in is just going to continue to, to radiate out energy until the hull of the object is at 2.7 Kelvin. And if you don't want to freeze to death inside, you have to somehow keep supplying energy to keep heating up the inside, which will then continue to radiate out energy because eventually it wants to be that 2.7 Kelvin. So traveling through deep space will be very challenging to stay warm enough. Bring your thermal underwear.